Okay, this is the texture demonstration. The objective here is to create a convincing illusion of texture. So your spoon should feel like metal, your wood should feel like wood, etc. Now, how do you do that? Well, you do that by observing carefully, not only matching the value, but also matching the color. So that's all it is. Um, convincing texture is getting the correct value and color. Uh, for instance, wood will reflect things differently than metal. Metal is highly reflective, wood is slightly reflective. Um, and if you observe here very carefully, you can see that even in this image, something is reflecting off of that wood. What it is, or what is it? We don't know, uh, but it seems like it could be fruit or something else that was placed on the table next to that fruit. The spoon, on the other hand, if you look very carefully, you can see that it's reflecting what appears to be a room. Uh, this highlight right here would look like the, the light of the room. And if you look very carefully, you'll see like a little rectangle there that could be a painting in a room. These highlights over here could be doors or windows. So that's highly reflective. So it's all about how the, the material treats the light. Glass, on the other hand, is transparent. So light will go right through it. It comes back or it curves around the edges of the glass and that's the only reason we can see glass. Yeah, so everything is reflective to a certain degree. That's why you can see it at all. When you do the shoe over here, you just have to make sure you're paying attention to the colors. Draw what you see, color what you see, not what you know. So you know the shoe to be leather, but don't just automatically assume that that's brown or black or whatever you think it is. Just look at it carefully because there are hints of green, there are hints of blue, there is gray, there's yellow, and you have to get all of that in there to make it convincing, right? There's a little blue here, blue here, blue, green over here, yellow, 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 and gray, of course, in lots of places. And lastly, you have the peach. Again, blur your vision. Make sure that the, the value is correct. Blend correctly. Don't just look at this once and say that's yellow. Look at it again and again and again to determine if it's yellow, where it starts switching to orange, where it starts switching to red, and if it's pink, and if it's dark red, or whatever it is. You need to be very attuned to what it is you're doing. Some of you have better copies than others, so you could even see in the shadow that there is hints of red in this one and here there are hints of yellow. So when you try to do texture, you're really taking your vision to another level. You're trying to see beyond what is taken for granted, you know? And that's how we're gonna approach this. Now, I'm just gonna draw this out. You have already seen all the measuring techniques. So for the sake of the video, I'm not going to show you, show myself drawing every single thing. I'm gonna come back when it's already drawn and in place and ready to color. That way we don't have a, a video much longer than it needs to be. If you have a problem drawing, go back to one of the first videos. I'll upload them showing the different measuring techniques and, and what you should do. For this particular one, I use a site size measuring technique and that's a video I'll upload if you haven't seen it yet. So next time you see me, or right now in an instant, what you're gonna see is all of these drawings, just the drawing, no shading. It's important, we're not shading with the pencil. We're shading with color pencil. So, so for the pens, for the glass in particular, don't shade it for the, the, the spoon. Don't shade it with your pencil. You could, if you don't have any color pencils, um, but I prefer you practice with your color pencils. So in just a second, the drawing will be complete. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do these one by one. And for the spoon, I'm just gonna use black and white. Okay, so I was explaining that sometimes students with a lot of color pencils feel like they have to use metallic silver or some type of metallic. That's not the way it works uh, because it looks metallic because of the way it reflects light. So if you duplicate that, then you should create a convincing metallic look. And I'm just going to start here in the shadow with the black. And this, the same rules still apply as far as um, how much pressure you apply 
and and all of that so if you apply a lot of pressure it'll be darker if you apply little pressure it'll be lighter um, all the drawings are done I kept the bottle as light as I could uh, right up against here in the spoon there's a a highlight you want to make sure that highlight stays in place it's very important for the metallic look you want to coordinate all the highlights and the shadows and make sure that they all work so right now with and also over here these three ridges each of them has their own highlight each of them has their own shadow and each of them has their own midtone and the shadow is in the top right for all of them as it is in the back of this one here you want to blur your vision make sure you don't go too dark too quick uh, black is a very strong color it could overwhelm things really fast if you're not careful but you also want to make sure that you're dark enough in the right places As you get to the head of the spoon, this is when really things really get start getting interesting. Um, don't just dismiss it. Look at it carefully. Observe it very carefully. Let me see if I can zoom in. That's as much as I can zoom in. But look at the look at where the shadows are. You see, don't just randomly place shadows. You want to make sure that the shadows are in the right place. So just quickly here with my color pencil, I'm going to start shading to try to duplicate that. Making sure that the highlights are in the right place. The only way this works is if the shadows and the highlights are all in the right place. So right here, I can see an outline for a highlight. Um, over here, there's also an outline for a highlight. And it doesn't have to be perfect, like nothing has to be perfect, but it does have to be in the right place. Over here, there's a little loop that's pretty dark. And this isn't, this doesn't just go for the, the spoon, this goes for everything. Like this goes out and it curves back in here. It's just a matter of observation. Again, that's going to be our little highlighted area. So we're going to leave a space for that. And that comes down in this direction. Okay. Now that that's done, and you can see that little pattern. Oh, there's also that painting. I swear that's a painting on the wall. So that painting, you can see it because there's a little highlight showing the borders. So I'm going to shade in such a way that I can leave a little highlight there. A little gray. All right now, and here there's also a curve, something's curved in here. And there is a highlight right along the edge of the spoon. There you go. Yep, that's the little pattern that you see in there. If you look carefully, you can see all of that. Now, wherever it's medium gray, I'm just going to go in and shade uh, with light pressure. Use my pencil with light pressure. All of this is medium right here.
The shadow is also a medium gray. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. It gets darker in some places, but I'm gonna start with medium. And then it almost kind of diminishes into nothing over there. I didn't draw this perfectly, so the shadow's coming off a little bit there, so there's a little, yeah, there's a little gap. But there's also the edge, which I, like I said, is very important. So we wanna make sure that we keep an edge here. That's gonna make it really pop and feel more metallic. There we go. And now the shadow. Uh, you have to be careful color pencil. It's not that forgiving. Um, it's not that easy to erase. I think you can erase it a little bit, but it's not easy. Okay, now uh, on the body of the spoon, we're gonna make sure we leave an area for the highlights. The highlights are the areas that are gonna remain white. And that's gonna have to be the white of the paper. Because the white, this white is not strong enough to go over black. So no matter, you know, it's just never gonna happen. It won't cover it. it. It helps to blend it really nicely. Like you can blend two colors together sometimes with white, but don't count on it being opaque enough to make something solid white. You have to rely on the white of the on the white of the paper. And as a matter of fact, you got to be careful because. Like back here on the back, remember when we did our color wheel, if you apply a little bit of white, it actually makes the, the gray darker. So you think you, you might lighten it? No, you're wrong. It's gonna make your gray darker. So keep that in mind. And now I'm gonna go in and very lightly shade with the black. Uh, now I'm going to start applying a bit more pressure in areas that I think need more pressure or areas that are darker. It might be a good idea to come in and do that close to, to close to last. That way we'll know that everything else is okay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and, and just make the, the light areas or the gray areas, the light gray areas. And as you're watching this video, you might think that it might take a long time and certainly it's not the fastest assignment, but as you're learning more and more about color, you have to take your time. It's, it's better to get it right, you know, the first time than to never get it right, than to do it very quickly and, and always mess it up. Lots of patience is required when you're dealing with color. And in particular metal, because metal, everything has to be in the right place or it's not going to feel correct. can see that that body is already starting to feel a bit metallic. I do want to darken this up a bit so I'm going to go in with the white and just try to blend it and right along the edge uh, make that that edge a bit more smooth, uh, soften the edge is what the word that I was looking for. And this will lighten up the darker bits, but that's already looking 
uh, quite nice and, and metallic. Uh, the value is not correct, but we're aiming for the texture. So if you can get a metallic look, I'll accept that. It's a nice start. Now. Now I'm going to try to start matching the value a bit more by getting the, the real dark areas in there. It's very important also to keep your pencil sharp along two different values. Remember to hatch and cross hatch. And this is going to take some practice. To, I don't expect to, you know, hit a home run your first time up at bat. As long as you learn a little bit. That's good enough. And now we're starting to get some dramatic contrast. Uh, you get contrast when you have a strong dark, extra strong light, contrasting ideas like earth and sky, but in this case, that's not what I mean. I mean, quite literally, you have a very uh, dark next to a very light value. Now I'm going to put in this shadow nice and strong. It should be. Remember to leave the little white brim there, right? The highlight, that's very important for the metallic effect. Shadow is a little bit soft along the edge, so you don't want to keep that very solid. So right along the edge, you just go over it again, just very, um, very lightly to break up the, the line.
back of my spoon is a bit too big, but it's okay. As long as, remember, the, the idea here is that it feels metallic. That's what we're aiming for. And so far I think I'm achieving that. Um, especially on video. On the, on the camera it looks great. In real life it feels metallic, but on the camera it looks better. I want to try to blend these two values right here. Yeah, that's nice. I think my highlight may be too strong, shining a bit too much, but I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna leave it like that to emphasize the, the contrast. Okay, uh, we're gonna start moving into the head of the spoon. Um, you could take so much time on something like this and make it you know, super realistic, especially with some nicer artistic tools like paint and pastels. But it's not really necessary. I mean, if, you, if you're achieving the illusion, you know, why push it? Don't push it too hard. But that's up to you. If that's what you like artistically and you want to make things hyper realistic and some people really enjoy that, then you really have to go in here and look at all the little tiny details and make sure that the values match perfectly. There certainly is a lot of skill in doing something showing hyper realism. It comes down to a matter of personal Preference. I don't like it to be too hyper real because then I, th I think, what's the point? You know, you already have a photograph of it. You, there's no point in having two photographs. But that's my, that's just my opinion. All right, my neck is a bit thicker, but I'm still gonna just treat it the same. Um, I'm just gonna expand the areas where the shadow was and where it should be. So it just, it'll look like it fits a bit. And you'll notice that the gaps in between here are very hard to pull off, so, um, like I said, we're just aiming for that feel and that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. For my perfectionist, that's going to be a bit tough, but you know, it's more enjoyable when you don't try to make everything absolutely identical. Uh, the same thing applies uh, for here. Look at the areas with the strongest uh, values or the shadows and make sure that they're in and that the value is correct. Really important to keep your pencil sharp here because it's such a tiny space and every little bit is, is important, believe it or not, to achieve the effect. So it's a bit harder for me to sharpen here at home. I don't have a sharpener. So I usually use a, a blade, a razor blade. I don't recommend sharpening with a razor blade until you have a lot of practice so you don't hurt yourself. Learning how to do that, I, I did cut myself a few times and that's not nice.
It's a matter of shading it in bit by bit. Don't rush it. You're going to screw up if you do. You'll have plenty of time for this assignment. So try to get it right the first time. Don't want to rush it and do a bad job. On the head of the spoon here, it's important to make sure that the highlights aren't too strong, you know. Uh, you already know how to blur your vision and compare. So even though it doesn't have to be perfect, you want to make sure that it isn't way out of whack, you know. And definitely this highlight and these two highlights need to be the brightest down here. So you, you have to dim everything else down so they don't compete with that. Okay, now at this point, these highlights don't feel strong enough. Why? The reason they don't feel strong enough is because there's not enough contrast. There's not enough dark things around it to make it feel like it's, like it's really bright. So I'm going to... So it's all about matching value and making sure that it's light where it needs to be light. It's dark where it needs to be dark. Not just that it's dark, but it's dark enough or light enough. And that's what texture is. It's, um, it's like a value scale just on another level. Um, observing every little minute detail of, of the object it is you're um, trying to texturize, you're trying to color. This is going to help blend it a bit and make it feel more natural and it just, it'll bring it together. It may lighten the darkest darks, it may darken the lightest because it kind of takes that black and it spreads it around. 
I'm almost done with this. As soon as I go over this, I'm just gonna maybe retouch it a bit and then finish up the shadow. But the reason I'm almost done, it's not perfect, but it certainly feels metallic. Um, and that's because I've matched most of the, most of the value here. Not all of it, but most of it. Enough of it to, to give it a metallic feel. So, I'm gonna go back and just kind of retouch areas that I think could be darker. This should blend here, becoming a much lighter gray as the shadow goes out. I'm taking it a little bit too far. Maybe not. Who can see? All right, I'm gonna stop there. Um, for the spoon. It's not perfect, but it's definitely, I think, it's definitely metallic. It still feels too strong, the highlight around that picture. Tone that down a bit. And as long as you have a metallic feel, then you're in the right place, okay? That's the spoon. All right, now it's important to keep your pencil sharp. So now that I finished the spoon, I'm gonna move on to the, to the bottle here. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna record the bottle because I want both uh, to be visible at the same time. 
So I may have to zoom out a bit. Let me see. Yeah, we'll just zoom out a bit, maybe do it like that. But I'm gonna go sharpen my pencil. It's important that you keep your pencil, pencils sharp, especially when you go from one to the other. Okay. So the bottle treat it the same way. Um, what's important about the bottle is to notice that there aren't any really strong lines around the edges. All right, we're moving on to the bottle. Like I was saying before, there aren't any lines around this thing. Remember that it's transparent. So try to draw it the best way that you can and then shade appropriately. Uh, much like the spoon, we're going to make sure that you just try to match the values. And I'll try to keep this on camera as much as possible. But if I veer off a little bit, I apologize. Even in something like this, as simple as this space here, you need to look into it and realize that there are different values right there. I'm not going to talk too much. Well, I think I'm not going to talk too much for this one because like I just said, it's much of the same.
Hopefully I'll be done with that easy. That's probably the easiest one. I like to think that there's an E here. And if you look carefully, you can see it. And there's a V here. Uh, sometimes when you have something like this, if you can break it up into patterns that you can understand, then it becomes a bit easier. And if you don't see the V or the E, just, you know, find your own pattern. That'll work.
I don't want this to be too bright, um, so I am gonna shade over it just a little tiny bit. See as I go along, I'm just applying more pressure in some places and not as much in other places. And like this on camera, it becomes pretty apparent, you know, what I'm doing. You know, how you can see this space and you see this space and, and so on. This isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but it gets the job done. Eraser will work just a little bit. Let me see. I think this line is a bit too strong. Yeah. So eraser will work a little bit on color pencil. Not a lot. Don't try to erase a lot.
done that a bit too dark. Whatever. So yeah, it just, I mean, it depends how far you want to take that as well. I mean, I could stay here another 30 minutes and make it even more similar. But again, what we're aiming for is that it feels like glass. And I think right now we've, uh, we've achieved that. I have to put in the shadow here and then I'll move on to the next one. All right, that's good enough. I'm just gonna break this up a little bit. Don't know what it looks like, but I think it's too sharp right there. Uh, certainly feels like glass. We have the spoon, we have the glass. Now let's move on to the wooden bowl. Uh, wooden bowl is a bit more fun. One thing that students ask all the time is if they have to do the whole bowl, no. Um, just draw what you see, only do half. So we're only gonna do this half. Okay, so the wooden bowl actually has some colors compared to the wooden spoon, I'm sorry, the metal spoon and the glass. So the question is what colors? So the first thing you have to do when you color anything is you have to ask yourself, what colors do I see there? And uh, get all those colors out. So I, for one, and I know as soon as I mention them, you may see them as well. You ask yourself, what color is that? Well, that looks like a, like a, a reddish brown. So guess what colors we're gonna get? We're gonna get red and we're gonna get brown for starters. Uh, when you look at it a little bit closer, it definitely looks like red orange, which if you have a red orange, grab it. And there definitely is some orange in some places, so you grab that too. So we have all these colors. If you peer deep into the dark area here, I don't know how well this will show up on camera. Let me see. But if you look into that, that's not black. That's one of the mistakes that a lot of students make. Um, it, it's very obvious when you are looking at it in person, that's not black. So you ask yourself, how do I get that dark without making it black? And the answer for that is, well, you get some dark colors 
Again, you could just ask, well, what color does that look like? And there definitely is some violet in there. So we're gonna use violet, which is a dark color, and we're gonna use brown. And then there's like a tint of red on top. And we're gonna use that for the dark areas of the bowl. The bowl, much like the spoon, has a very light highlight on the edge. That's very important to make it look three-dimensional. It also has uh, something reflecting here, 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 and all along here. So when you're doing the bowl, keep that in mind. Don't just mindlessly move forward. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in with black in there. As a matter of fact, there's little black marks which emphasize the rings of the tree that were used to create it, and I'm gonna save my black for that. But that is the first thing that I'm gonna do. And I think I'm just gonna go very dark uh, right from the beginning with a, a brown. So in that spot, I'm gonna use brown and I'm gonna apply plenty of pressure to make sure that it gets dark. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing down here because it's kind of equally dark down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing so I don't have to do this process twice. While you're down here, you gotta try, or whenever you're dealing with texture, you have to try to stay directional. What does that mean? If, if this was an actual object, the wood would have a grain and the grain kind of goes down like this or straight down in some cases. And you have to be mindful of the rings of the tree. You're gonna to have to put those in place as well, okay? In color pencil, a dark color pencil can cover a light color pencil, but it doesn't work the other way around. It's much harder for a light color pencil to cover a dark color pencil. So you have to be mindful and understand that. Don't go too crazy with the darks. Still the same as far as your hatching and cross hatching. The more you hatch and cross hatch, the darker it'll be. It's not exactly the same, but it works to a certain degree. So that's how you start. In the video, it looks a lot darker than in real life. So that's not it. You can't just stop there. All right, the next layer is gonna be uh, violet. So we're gonna take the violet and we're gonna do the same thing. Now, it's easy for me to tell you this. Um, 
But typically when you start coloring, there's some things that you have to gain just by experiencing them. Uh, so you might come across a situation where you don't know what to do, but you just take the basics that you've learned and you try to apply them to the new situation. Um, it doesn't, you don't always find an answer immediately, right? So sometimes it takes a long time to realize uh, what two colors will work to solve a certain problem. Um, sometimes you never figure out, you know, what works. Um, if you have somebody more experienced than you, you should speak to that person and ask them for advice. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a layer of, of red. But not just everywhere. I'm going to put it like right in between those black marks. And if, once you have this in front of you, you'll see what I mean. And last but not least, I'm, like I said, I'm going to get that black and I'm just going to put in those black areas that, that you can see in there. And it might not seem like it's making a big difference, especially not on video, but trust me, it is. Let me see if I shine a light closer to it so you can see it. It's still very hard to see on video. There you can see a little bit that it's not black, but you'll see it in person. If you're really having a hard time, just come up to my demonstration and take a look. If I have it available. If not, you'll be able to tell that it definitely isn't black once you have the reference in front of you. Okay, now that the dark part is done, and that same combination, by the way, we're gonna save it for these lines, right? Uh, so this, we're not just gonna make that black, we're gonna, we're gonna mix all of those together. Now that that's done, it's time to begin with uh, what I would describe as, as a bit more fun, which is I'm just gonna very lightly start putting in a brown, and I'm gonna add these colors in here one by one. And this is a this is the kind of the well how would I say this this is the the stroke that I'm using for the pencil. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna try to duplicate what I see, which is kind of like this in pieces. And we're gonna build it up and build it up until it is uh, a lot more like the reference. And you can leave areas lighter. Like definitely, there's some areas with the reflection where you where you want to leave that area, not completely, but you want to leave that area a little bit lighter to show that there's a reflection there. And if you must, we might come back in later with just an eraser and bring those areas out a bit more if they're, if they're too covered up. I actually want to erase that line mark here on the edge. So it's darkening it more than I would like.
covered over some of that highlight, but it's okay. We'll come back later with an eraser and just bring it out again. Alright, so that's a start. Now I'm gonna go in with, uh, let's go in with the orange. It's the color I'm seeing the strongest right now. And all the areas that you see as orange, just go in and do the same thing. And yeah, again, this takes a while. And this what it is. Orange is very strong down here. I'm going to start uh, trying to make it a bit more solid by applying more pressure, right? So that first base with the brown was very light. We may go back in with another, you know, another base and make it a bit darker. But we do want this to feel solid. And you can already see how, how this technique might start to work. Um, actually, I don't want to leave these spots too bright. I think I'm going to go in and just do them as well. Some areas lighter, some areas darker. You don't want, you want to get a variety of, of, uh, of values with your colors. This is, this shouldn't be sticking up, so it's bugging me just a little bit. I'll cover that up. Make that a bit smoother. All right, now I'm gonna go in and do the same thing with red. And then lastly, I'm gonna do red orange. If you're having a hard time seeing where the red is exactly, you could always blur your vision. And let me see, I'll blur the camera. And you can see the, the red is more here, 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 um, and that's if you want to get really specific with it.
Over those areas that we discussed, go over them, but not too dark. The rim here is like a light pink. Um, if you don't have a pink, just use red very lightly, but don't leave that white, okay, because it's not. So use red very lightly and go in there and make that uh, pink. All right, now I guess I've applied the basics. Now it's time to go back in with the brown. Now that I've applied the basics, I'm gonna go back in with the brown and kind of solidify it a bit more and just do this back and forth. I'm gonna do this back and forth with red, red, orange, and brown. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the lines. Oh, no problem. But slowly kind of solidifying it. Like I said, we'll just concern ourselves with those reflections at the end. We will we'll get an eraser and and go at it with the eraser. If you have like a tan color, that might be nice. But remember that I'm just using the basic set of twelve with uh, with uh, more color pencils. It might be a little bit faster. See the brown really starts to bring it together, but of course it diminishes the it diminishes the other colors a bit, but that's fine. We're, we'll go back and, and retouch it. It's part of the process. Take the violet and just, I want to shorten up that highlight up there. Violet alone might not be enough. All right, now that it's a bit more solid, we're going to go back with the orange and we're going to do it again. But now we're going to apply more pressure. This isn't the only way to do it. I'm sure there are other ways, but this is a surefire way to get it done. Wanna keep that edge crisp. The 
orange down here is very strong. I'd be scared to put that in there. kind of getting there. I'm sure some of you could already start to see it. Let me see. This little bump is still bugging me. Um, let me see. We have to mix our brown like we did before. Let's mix our violet. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, now with the red, I'm gonna go in, do the same thing. Stronger, keep it directional. Making it feel like wood. All right, now stop and ask ourselves if it kind of feels like wood, and it does. Um, are there certain areas I would like to be a bit darker? Yes. So I'm not gonna give up just yet, or I'm not done just yet. I'm never giving up. But I'm just gonna darken it a bit more. I'm trying to get there, push it a little bit closer. If you look here, you can clearly see that there's kind of this shape here. So I'm gonna try to put that in. How? I'm not quite sure. Maybe with the with the brown, we're just gonna darken that area. See, this is way too bright right now. So we gotta dim it down a bit, but let's finish with the brown and we'll come back and we'll dim that down. We've got to tone down those highlights a bit. Same way we've been doing. Just mix all the red, uh, orange, and brown into it just to tone them down. You don't want to get rid of them. You just want it just to be a little bit less, you know, obvious. And then later on we may, we might uh, bring it back a little bit if we have to. 
All right, um, I'm almost happy with that. I think I'm going to, I want to thin out this highlight even more. Violet, brown, I think it was brown first, and then red. Uh, this highlight's giving me a hard time. And then red. And I'm gonna use the red to make that pink, remember? Just go right up against it and make it pink. There you go. Um, Again, is it perfect? No. Nothing is perfect. It doesn't have to be. Does it feel like wood? I'd say so. But are we done? Not yet. We have to put in these little rings. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do the same exact way that we created this dark uh, shadow in there. Make sure I'm still on camera. And I'm going to use, I'm still going to stay directional. Meaning, I'm just going to go straight down like this and shorter, shorter strokes. And I'm comparing it. That's why I have it next to itself. So I am comparing it to know how far down I should go. It's not going to be perfect, but it gives me an idea. You don't have to push this out if you don't want to. One, two, three, four. Can I fit two more lines in there? Huh? Let's try. And I think we could, we're gonna have to squeeze in one more line in here. You might not get this perfect, don't worry about that. Just try your best. If you don't get it perfect, don't worry about starting over. Just, if you, if you have that wood feel, then, uh, then don't worry about it, just move on. All right, now you might think that's good enough, and it's almost good enough, but not good enough. Uh, now we need to go in with the purple, and we'll go on top of it with the red, and then we'll just do any touch-ups that we think uh, are necessary. Like, uh, you know, pointing or making apparent the highlights a little bit more, or showing them a little bit more by erasing. Um, maybe darkening in some places. Whatever you think uh, needs to be done, you just touch it up. And lastly, let's go ahead and grab the red. And we're gonna go over that with red.
Okay, um, are there any areas that need to be touched up? Sure. Is it good enough like this? I think so. I think it feels like wood. Let me just put a little bit of emphasis on some of these areas and then I'll bring out the highlights and, and call it a day for the wood. All right, um, definitely I'm about to stop here. Oh, my color pencil fell. And let's just use our eraser to bring that highlight a bit out. Or have it be more a little bit more accurate, right? And then right along this edge we have Have a bit more and right here in the middle is it perfect no does it look like wood I'd say so so let's stop the wood right there. Okay. Um, next up is the peach, which is actually a lot of the same colors, uh, except we're gonna add, we're definitely gonna add yellow. Let me try to zoom out a bit. We're going to definitely add some yellow for the peach. And then the very last thing we're gonna do is the shoe, which actually isn't as complicated as it looks. All right, um, if the lighting has changed a bit, it's because I started in the daytime and now it's nighttime. And the pear, or peach, or whatever this is, we're gonna treat it the same way that we just did the wooden bowl. The dark areas, we're gonna do the same exact way the only difference is that we have some yellow here and that we're going to uh, blend that yellow and we are going to use black. Well, we use black in the other one as well. Uh, but we're going to use a bit of black to put in the shadows. Uh, start in, so you're aiming for a gray. So you could use black and white like you did on your color wheel. And I'm just really lightly going over that.
right there in that shadow we have just a little bit of red. Typically those are the things that people don't see. People just assume that it's a shadow and that it's all the same. It's not. Um, this is what we would consider like a red-gray or a yellow-gray. So a little bit of yellow in there. Um, you know what, for this one we're going to do it a little bit different. I was originally going to... I'm not, hopefully it works. I was a, It'll work. Yeah. Uh, originally I just wanted to use the same techniques. But maybe let's, let's experiment with something a little bit different to show you. So instead of combining all those colors that we discussed, like we did in the wooden, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use black and, and red to try to achieve a similar, if not the same effect. But keep it light. Remember, you don't want to overwhelm anything here. Um, so definitely try to just keep it, keep it light at first and then you can darken if you feel like you have to darken anywhere. Before I get too far with that, I want to make sure that's going to work. So, let me actually put it to the test. I'm going to actually put a, a little bit of red into this, into this uh, black that I've been using. And yeah, you know, I think that's a really nice effect. If anything, I think it's too red. Maybe I have to go back in with the the black and darken it up even more. kind of a, a red orange maybe with a little bit more emphasis uh, on the yellow so I'm gonna start it off like that stay directional and this is just like the first layer we're gonna come back in later and Make sure that this is very well saturated. Um, this seed in the center seems very pink to me, and we're gonna add, we're gonna add, uh, add the little dark areas. But you do want it to, to be pink with little areas of white, so don't cover it completely, just go over it very lightly and then make it a bit more opaque in certain areas so it, you know, it'll have a variety of values. 
and we're going to let me zoom in a bit more here. I think I can afford to. So, if you look carefully here, you'll see that there are certain areas where it's just a little bit more, and that's just what you want to put in there. I'll start going in with the yellow. Uh, very light at first. Yellow is a light color, so I'm not worried about it dominating any of the other colors. But you do, like there's a little highlight right above there. You do want to make sure that you leave a little area that's white around the top of the seed so that can remain. Uh, there's clearly some orange in this yellow. So uh, very lightly I'm just going to go over it with orange to give it a tint of that. Go right up to the red that we had put in there before. As a matter of fact, maybe I want to even put some more red in there, but I'm going to use the red orange. And that seems to be very, it's like a very strong color. So um, I don't really want to hold back here. I'm just going to make it a very strong color. Soften or lighten the pressure as you approach the edge where it's supposed to blend so you don't have a hard line.
Okay, I think I'm gonna put in the little dots here. Try not to have this be completely random. It's easy to just, you know, go nuts here. Just try to keep some order here. I think the orange here is strong. I'm just gonna go in and try to make it strong. Stay directional. Sorry. I like to keep all of my pencils in one hand, that way uh, I don't have to worry if they're going to fall off or, you know, where they're going or, and whenever I need them, because you need to switch them up often is the truth, you just grab them from your hand and you switch it up.
I have to darken this seed, you know. It's, so I'm just gonna try to make it, I'm using a lot of black in this one. Again, just to be a little bit different. Let's see if I can darken it by making a gray and then adding, adding some red to it. muddy it up make it look a little bit you know I don't even know I don't have the words to describe it muddy or like it's been in there in the pit but you don't want to do that everywhere it does have a bit of a highlight kind of right here I'm just going to go in with my eraser and try to bring out a little bit of the highlight and then just make it a bit more refined. You don't want it going where it's not supposed to be. Oops, wrong color, right. And now right here on the inside, I'm going to go in pretty heavy with the yellow um, because it does feel really yellow. On the top, I may try to keep white but this part right here this part right here i'm going to go in pretty heavy with this yellow right now see if we can get that to be a bit more similar oh yeah i think that's doing the trick I'm gonna not go in, not as heavy. So just, I am gonna put yellow here and here, just not as heavy. And here. I think that, that my seed looks like it's kind of floating in air a bit. I think that it needs a bit of a shadow on the bottom. So I'm gonna use my brown to darken it up a bit. And then down here, there's definitely some, some black. And I'm going to... And that, that's gonna help to solidify it. Shadows, shadows help to solidify things. Definitely this is too white, that's for sure. So I'm gonna strengthen this a bit and strengthen that a bit. And there's a little piece here. I don't know how to color that. Maybe if I do a little shade of brown. Yeah, that'll give me something. But needless to say, it's not the right value because it needs to be dark right there. Now, I'm going to go in and just add uh, these significant shadows just wherever th I think I can use them. So I think that definitely I could use some here. There's one here. There's definitely a shadow along here and all along the edge. That shadow, I'm going to change it later. I'm not going to leave it black. I want to change it by putting red over it. And this one too. And there's a little gray here that I'm going to have to put red into as well. shadow down here there's a highlight down here light area and I want to make sure that that's sticking out so I'm going to emphasize the shadow but without covering the highlight
soften that shadow, right? It ha has to have a smooth transition as it goes out. Let's go ahead with the red. And we're just gonna go over some of these areas where I just added that black just to make that a very like dark maroon and not a, uh, not a black. I over but I exceeded the, the boundary a bit there. I'm try to erase it. May it work, might not. a little bit but not completely so touch that up I would say that's good enough to where I'm happy with it. Um, maybe just a little line here. So I'm going to stick with the same techniques and I'm going to do the, that one. Remember to blur your vision and just compare.
when you're shading these areas, you want to make sure that you don't cover it all in red. Uh, you look carefully, I left some areas in light red, and that's meant to represent kind of the lighter, the lighter gray areas. At this point, I'm not talking much, so there's not much to say. I've already kind of said what I needed to. I think I um, could benefit by adding a bit of brown just to darken some areas here. And very lightly I'm going to add brown to that area, kind of like we did over there. Maybe just glaze over it with yellow, but then I have to go back in with black and emphasize that there is some darkness around it. This area should be gray as well, don't leave that white. Okay, there is a little bit of, just a little tiny bit of yellow here. So I'm gonna go back with the brown and just darken some areas that I feel like should be a little bit darker. See this area is not really blended enough, so that, that might be a good area to go in with a bit of brown and then maybe uh, some red on top of that. This is sticking out too much, darken that a bit as well. some red on top to kind of blend it all together. Take some red orange. Let's put it in some some of these areas. Just down here, I just wanna make this gray. And I feel like this is too bright. Make this gray as well.
I'm almost done with this one. I know this one took a little while. Just gonna get a little bit of red into the shadow. Got to darken that shadow a bit down there as well. But you got to make sure it blends. So I'm almost done. I went in with the eraser. I added a few highlights. Um, it's a bit more red. If I wanted to, I could tone it down a bit with uh, some violet, which has red in it. But I kind of like it just a little bit more red. So it feels like a peach or whatever it is. Uh, the shadows more or less match. You should be in pretty good shape. And I could I could add a bit of brown to tone down the red or the intensity of the of the red. I kind of like it. I like the intensity of the red. So I don't, I don't want to lose it either. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back in some places. Yeah, it's good enough. Alright, now the last one is going to be the shoe. Now the shoe is interesting because it has yellows and blues and uh, maybe even a little bit of green. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the yellows. And those are really easy to see. So when you're doing the shoot, don't just go, you know, don't go nuts and and just make it all black. That's definitely what you don't want to do. But these yellows are maybe they're tinted with a bit of a bit of, of of orange. So Maybe we'll go into this with yellow and then we'll go over it again with a bit of red to give it an orange tint. And I'll be honest, the the shoe's kind of hard to draw. Uh, the the better you can draw it, the easier it's going to be to to get all of this in the right place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my blue and very just very lightly I'm going to put in blue but it's like a light blue like a baby blue what I'm gonna to try to do since I don't have baby blue oh actually I do I do have a sky blue in here if uh, I'm gonna use it this is the 12 pack which is enough basic pack so I am gonna use the sky blue if I didn't have it, I would use 
uh, regular blue and I would just put white over it to try to get it to be kind of like uh, this baby blue. Now this blue also has a tint of, of green on it. So I could go over with a bit of green and, and to make it a bit more green. And the blue is right next to the yellow in most places. But I mean, I guess the most important thing is just to notice that those things are there. All right, now I'm gonna use my red, just slightly, oh, this is red orange. Use my red to give the yellow a slight orange tint, just very lightly, very lightly go over that. Uh, notice I left the little white spot here. That's where I highlight that. It's right there. Now I'm going to take green. Actually, I'll take yellow and lightly go over all the blue that I did to give it a slightly green tint. Very lightly. Okay, now it's time to start using my black, which is gonna be the dominant color here. And uh, of course, the pressure has to vary pretty significantly here. And it's so intricate. Sometimes you'll find that you just missed a spot like I did right here. I just missed that spot. And right above the shoe, um, shoe tongue. This call, there's a bit of blue, I'll put that in. Leave little spaces where you think there's highlights.
Okay, uh, definitely there's some green and this little part of the shoe. So you can get your green. Uh, I think it's more of a lime green. Kind of a lime green mixed with mixed with blue. So I'm just gonna do it lightly and then I'm gonna put a sky blue into it. Actually now that I look at it carefully, it's both. It's a lime green and a dark green. Over that lime green, I'm going to go again with my sky blue. And now I'm going to go back to the black. This area here is gray, so I'll go over it with using black, but go over it very lightly. And then I'm going to actually go over that with, with white. First let me shade in here. There's a bit of blue in that gray. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. I am gonna go over it with white. And then I'll go back to black. And just push it in a little bit. It's just not so white. Same thing happening down here. The shoelace has highlights, so when you're coloring it, just you know leave a little area, and don't go over that area as hard as the other areas. You're still gonna go over it, just lighter. So this area right here, for instance, you just lightly go over that.
here you have to make sure that you try, uh, I'm not going to be able to completely, try to leave some space in between where the laces start, that way you can still see the lace since they're both black. Um, so just try to leave a little bit of space. Here I, I can't, I already put it, maybe I can lightly go this way. A little bit lighter around here.
I am going to stop this right there. Is it perfect? No. Does it feel like a leather shoe? Yeah. So I'm going to end this right there. This video is already going to be the longest video I've ever done. We don't need it to be any longer than it already is. Alright guys, I'll see you in class. <laughs> you made it this far into the video. See ya.